Study Session 5 Social Services Sector Introduction An efficient social services sector is essential in an even, integral, and sustainable development of the level of productivity of the other sectors of the economy of the state. Two most essential social services sectors are education and health. In this study session, you will explore these two social services sectors which are considered vital to the development of any economy. Important issues that we will examine are what education is, the structure of the Nigerian educational system, as well as goals and objectives of setting them up. We will also discuss requisite data on the trend in the health and nutritional statistics will be presented. Learning Outcomes When you have studied this session, you should be able to 1. Outline and discuss the structure of education in Nigeria 2. Expose the students to interdependence between health and education 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 in its broad sense has been defined as any process by which an individual gains knowledge or insight or develops attitudes and skills alternatively it is the process in which an individual is assisted to attain development of his potentialities and his maximum capacity when necessary according to the right reason and to achieve its perfect self-fulfillment. It is also concerned with the cultivation of the old person, especially his intellect. It is the human resources of any nation rather than its physical capital and material resources which ultimately determine the character and the pace of its economy and social development. It is often regarded as an active factor of production while others like capital and natural resources are passive factors of production. Thus, human resources constitute the ultimate basis of the wealth of a nation. Due to its importance and critical roles performed, Labor capital has always formed an important goal in any developmental policy design which every economy often desires to achieve. Improving and widening access to education, especially basic education, has been an object of past three to four decades. Structure of the Nigerian educational system In Nigeria, Formal education is made up of three levels, mainly primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary education. These constitute the fourth level or component of basic education. Basic education is often considered the right which nations have a responsibility to guarantee to each generation. This particularly explains the adoption of the default universal basic education in Nigeria in 1976. Primary education of six years duration is for children from six to 11 years. Secondary school education. This secondary school education system inherited from Britain is made up of grammar schools commercial and technical colleges spanning a five-year period. This is usually for children between the ages of 12 and 18 years. The system was maintained from 1960 to 1985. In 1986, there was a shift to the current educational system spanning six years divided into three years each of junior and senior secondary school tertiary and higher education. 
post-secondary or higher education is synonymous with tertiary education, covering colleges of education, monotechnics, polytechnics, and universities. Higher education in Nigeria is aimed at providing specialized manpower as well as nation builders, promotion of the economy and the social well-being of the nation, self-reliance and self-sufficiency. Goals and objectives of Nigeria's higher education system, colleges of education. These are the following goals and objectives. One, teaching, encouragement of the spirit of inquiry and creativity in teachers. Two, production of highly motivated and conscientious and efficient classroom teachers. Polytechnic and Colleges of Technology. The goals and objectives of polytechnics are teaching research with emphasis on application as well as development and public service through one, the production of high level and middle level manpower as appropriate in necessary areas in agricultural, industrial, commercial, and economic development. Two, the identification and solution to the technological problem and the need for industry and the production of technicians and technologies for direct employment in the industry. Universities in Nigeria. The goals of teaching, research, and public service through 1. Encouragement of the advancement of learning in diverse disciplines. 2. The development of high level of manpower to meet the identified needs of the economy. 3. Generation and dissemination of knowledge. 4. Research relevant to the national and local development problems of the country. 5. The maintenance and transformation of the cultural heritage of the country through the preservation and adaptation of local traditions and values. And 6. Public service. Enrollment in Nigeria's educational system. Education is the forum on which all other developments take place, and it has been recognized as a tool of moral, political, and technological development. Enrollment of students that invest in education will reflect the state of educational sector in the economy. Between 1998 and 2003, there was a gradual growth rate, both at the primary and the secondary school levels up to year 2000, while there was a dramatic decline in the rate of tertiary level from 9.3 to 4.3 between 1998 and 1999. This continued through 2000, but later picked up in the following years. Specifically, primary level witness an increase from 22.5 million in 1998 to 23.7 million in 1999. This represents 5.3 percent growth rate. One quick explanation for the increase can be attributed to the campaign and implementation of the universal basic education introduced at 1990. At the secondary school level, there was a steady increase in enrollment in the period under review. In 1999, the enrollment rate was 6.1 million for secondary school with a growth rate of 5.2%. This fell to 4.9% in the year 2000, but later increased to 6.8, 7.75, and 8 percent in the subsequent years. The actual enrollment increased during that period under review but at a very low pace. At the tertiary level there was a growth rate of 4.3 percent in 1999 given 1998 experience. 
the enrollment in the year 2000 stood at 1 million but declined by 2.7% to 0.73 million in 2001. It later increased steadily in the remaining years with 0.75 and 0.76 million in 2000 and 2003 respectively. Enrollment by sex and level of education. Over the years, female education has been concluded as a form of development level of women education affecting economic product, child health and welfare and also serves as a family planning method. The importance of the statement can be summarized in the assumption that when a child is educated, the whole nation is educated. The table above indicates the trend in gender enrollment in educational sector between 1998 and year 2003 in Nigeria. At the primary and secondary education levels, the female gender witnessed gradual growth rate in enrollment except in 1999 and year 2000, where the same figures were recorded. Why in year 2003 there was a decrease in growth rate at the primary school levels? It was 40.7%. 44.4% and 46% in 2001, 2002, and 2003, respectively. This shows a consistent pattern of growth in female gender at the primary school levels. Whereas in the case of secondary school, the rates have been oscillating. It was 41% in both 1999 and year 2000 and increased by 43% in 2001 and jumped to 44 percent in 2002 before falling back to 43 percent in 2003. Unlike the two lower levels, the female enrollment during the period at the tertiary level suffered a slight decline from 1998 to 2003. The rate declined from 44% in 1997 to 43% and 42% in the years 2000 and 2001, respectively. It was, however, stable in 2002, only to decline again to 41% in 2003. The number of students managed by a teacher determines how much the teacher will impact on the total life of a student. Having a low number of students per teacher will increase educational quality and output of both the teacher and the student. UNESCO has benchmarked for the teacher-student ratio at all levels of education, which are ratio 1 to 35 to 40, Ratio 1 to 25 to 30, ratio 1 to 10 to 15 for primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, respectively. The table above shows the teacher student ratio during the period under review. At the primary school level, the ratio was overshooting in 2000 and 2003 why it was within the standard of UNESCO policies in the remaining years. Also, at the secondary school level, the ratio was overshooting in 1999, 2000, and 2003. It was, however, within the limit of UNESCO standard in 1998, 2000, and 2002. However, the situation was quite different at the tertiary level where the ratio was overshooting throughout the period of review. Between 1998 and 2000, it stood at 1 to 12, but reduced considerably in 2000 to 1 to 11, and was steady at this point to 2003. Health. 
health according to the World Health Organization is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, and social wellness and not necessarily the absence of disease or infirmity. The World Health Organization have indicators with which they measure health such as infant and child mortality rate, burden and disease, and disability adjusted lives years. According to Amatia Sen, 1991, health is among the basic capabilities that give the value to human life. Kofi Annan conceived health as one of the desires of men and women around the world. For individuals and families, health brings the capacity for personal development and economic security in the future. Health is basic to job productivity, capacity to learn in school, and the capability to grow intellectually, physically, and emotionally. Society with a heavy burden of diseases tends to experience a multiplicity of several impediments to economic progress. Conversely, several of the great take-offs in economic history, such as the rapid growth of Britain during the age of industrial revolution, the take-off in the US in the early 20th century, and the dynamic development of the Southern European and East Asia in the 50s and 60s was supported by important breakthroughs in public health, disease control, and improved nutritional value. The table above shows that population per registered hospitals dropped radically over the years under review. For instance, between 1970 and 1991, the ratio declined radically except in 1980 when it climbed up again. This trend indicates that there was an improvement in the establishment of hospitals. Similarly, the population per doctor fell in 1980 and early 1990, but picked up in the late 1990s and remained almost constant until 2001. Thus, average 40 1,753 between 1995 and 2001. This implies that doctors were either being produced or the population were growing more rapidly than the production of doctors. The frequent closures of universities as a result of strikes arising from poor working conditions also contributed to decline in the number of graduates from medical schools. Population per hospital bed also decreased in 1980s, but it started rising again in 1993 and peaked in 2001. This trend indicates the shortage or inadequacy of beds in hospitals which might be attributed to poor funding. Channels through which good health enhances the education of an individual. Health and education are closely related in the process of economic development. On the one hand, greater health capital may improve the returns to investment in education. In part, because health is an important factor in school attendance and in the formal learning process of a child. A longer life raises the return to investment in education. Better health at any point during working life may effect lower the rate of depreciation of education capital. On the other hand, greater education capital may improve the return to investment in health because many health programs rely on basic skills often learned at schools including hygiene and sanitation not to mention basic literacy and numeracy education is also needed for the formation and training of health personnel 
also good health as an infant enhances cognitive development. Also, elder children derive greater benefit from schooling. The child who goes to school more frequently is more likely to enjoy higher school attainment than someone who does not go to school regularly because the mental agility from primary, secondary, and tertiary levels would be enhanced. The health of other family members also affect educational enrollment when siblings are healthy. Summary In this study session, we saw how education and health played complementary role in the development of an individual. Education, in its broad sense, has been defined as any process by which an individual gains knowledge or insight or develops attitudes and skills. The structure of formal education in Nigeria is made up of primary, secondary, and tertiary. Health, on the other hand, has been defined by the World Health Organization as a state of complete physical, mental, and social wellness and not necessarily the absence of disease or infirmity. This is the end of study session 5. Thanks for listening.